When it comes to EVE Online, every player wants to know the most effective tactic available. You want to know the meta. The meta controls everything. It determines what will and will not happen. Knowing the meta will alter your views, make you question your reality. It might even make you laugh. And now, you're part of it. You're watching The Meta Show. Hello and everybody that's not on the ad break, welcome to the Meta Show, it didn't show me that we had an ad break. Today is the 29th of September 2024 and we are going to be talking today about the CSM and all that entails, what it takes to be a member of the CSM uh, and what the Nullbox look for in their members of the CSM. And then we're going to go on to Betty talking about, um, well, talking to Beyond about isk and all things market pvp and what he does for the alliance i believe betty anything from you before we get into this yeah yeah i've actually been wanting to pick beyond's brain for some time now so i'm really glad that he's joined us today because not only is he going to talk about what he does for the alliance i'm, I'm gonna help i'm gonna see if he'll give us some uh cool tools uh to use for ourselves and making isk in the markets Sweet. So let's get into our first segment, which is the top story, and that is the CSM elections coming up. Kaz, you got your mic muted. He's definitely talking. I can see you talking, but Discord's not picking it up. <laughs> which it was a minute ago, which is really weird. <laughs> while he's sorting oh, I know that what out. Says. While he's sorting that out. Um, so for those that do not know, the CSM or Council of Stellar Management is the group that is put together by CCP to advise them on changes to the game and help them make decisions to further the game. They don't make the decisions, but they have input and advise on what direction to take. <laughs> they're like the, the voice, so, they're like the elected yeah. voice of the of the people, right? Yeah. Yeah, and they're chosen by the, the to use a quote here, by the people, for the people, um... I always wear a tie uh, to um, help advise on the game. And has Kaz fixed his mic? Because I have some questions, if not. Is it a stream problem? How did I, I, I don't know how to... What? Let me see. I don't know how to mute Kaz. He's not muted. Oh, wait, Kaz, try and talk now. You're not muted. What? Sorry about this, folks. Apparently Discord's being really stupid. Betty, let's go on to talking to Beyond, and we'll circle back around to Kaz when I work out what in the hell is going on. No, that's great. No, okay. So, yeah, you're you're on the hot seat now, Beyond. Um... Hello. So, yeah. So, we've been friends for quite a while. Like, I really had the pleasure of meeting you quite early in my career, which I think was amazing because you were part of ASCII before you moved beyond ASCII. And um, uh, let's start with what drew you to Eve, um, what drew you to your your career in Goon Swarm, and and the financial leadership and PvP market PvP aspects of you playing this game. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Um... 
I started EVE uh, with a bunch of friends because we were looking for a new game. Uh, we all like sci-fi, we have played a lot of MMOs, and EVE had in 2018 the alpha uh, situation where you could try it without paying. So we started there and I was actually just looking to like see the game, like like visually it's very impressive. Um, so I spent the first like 14 days, 3 weeks flying around knowing nothing about what the hell was going on and realizing ISK was suddenly important. Uh, because when you lose your ship, because you don't know what low sec it, uh, low sec is, uh, you need a new one. Um, but yeah, my friends stopped playing. I tried uh, factional warfare for like 14 days, and I, factional warfare back then wasn't what it is today. So it got very boring very quickly. Yeah, I imagine. Um, yeah, I was gonna say. I got picked up by a high sec uh, mining give, like corp and spent like three hours mining and realized that's boring. Uh, <laughs> but had spent a lot of time like watching um, shows and talks about the game and the like the stories this game brings really brought me in a lot and. I don't know. At some point, I saw a, a meta show where Aerith were talking to Mittens about like how the MER was manipulated by, by the Goonswarm Federation and how they made like tons of money doing that. And I was like, that sounds cool. Um, so without knowing anything about what the hell he was talking about, I took my my Condor, which was what I could fly at that point, to Jita with my 28 million isk, and I don't think I undocked for nine months. Uh, oh, wow. And what exactly I, did you do? I, uh, <laughs> I, um, I was like watching all the YouTube videos I could find about like how to alpha market trade um, and learning about like day trading versus regional trading and that way through just learning like the symbol of buying low selling high, high watching like waves of shit getting sold and i don't know nine months later i had 800 billion to my name and um yeah uh joined the low sec corporation started flying with bombers bar did a lot of bombing in and hunting in a lot of the space started like triple bushing with uh, accounts for bomber spa to dodge lances on titans and i think at some point lawn got very tired of me dropping on them and hunting them so they recruited me um was in lawn for like three to four months the first jeff deployment happened started talking a lot with havish and dave and guy and a lot of the ascii people in general and got uh, recruited from Lawn, where I got my start um, and was in in ASCII for like two years, I think. Uh, eventually got the, uh, made the mistake of becoming friends with uh, Ranger Gamma and Rap Knight. Um, <laughs> later on Cassini as well, and then got recruited and joined WAF uh, to like have a focus on the alliance economy instead of doing a lot of things i try to like solo focus on one thing and do that re very well uh so yeah uh it's been six years four of them in in the imperium and i i if you ask me like how i got recruited i have no idea um i'm sure you you just said ranger and i'm sure you were voluntold i'm i'm quite positive but that's it's good um besides mittens and seeing that meta show were there any particular mentors that you honed in on to help you learn you mentioned watching youtube channels and such like is there a, a guru out there besides your secret mind that we could look to, <laughs> to to learn from i um there was a guy and i i don't remember his name because he removed all his videos like back in 2020 um but he had a lot of like like simple guides on like how do you spot the market manipulation of other people when is a market bad to go into um and nowadays like 95 percent of this doesn't work anymore because eve is a changing game and people adapt and evolve but it gave me some some fundamental rules about how i see market trading and what i do and i've been trying to teach other people like the way i think because 
there's no strict formula like with this tower adding, for instance, where it's very much like have these skills, fly this ship, do this site, you will get this profit. Market trading is a lot more fluid because it's like real people and real problems you interact with. Um, so I have a set of rules I follow and try to teach people and sometimes I have people comparing it to like PI where it's like it's a lot of boring work in the beginning because there's a lot of learning. But the second you have the shit set up and it starts running, you sometimes look back and are like, oh, while we've been sitting on this Titan waiting to get bridge in, I've been on my marketing trading all for like the last 35 minutes and I made 13 billion doing that. So that's the good thing about like market trading. You can put it down and take it up whenever you want. And the more time you put into it, the more you make out of it. But it's also yeah, passive. Definitely. So... Um, yeah, I used to fill times when you don't know what you should be doing. So when I'm <laughs> your, your ship spinning times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There exactly. Um, I I try to time myself in a week. Like, how much time do I just sit looking at ships without undocking, without doing anything active? And I knew how much Iska would make if I was his task spinning in that that time. And when that number like crossed a billion and a half of like wasted time, quote unquote, I mm. just started spinning five years tasks and havens, and then have my sixth account uh, market trading. Wow. Because then you're doing something that's, all the time. That's pretty amazing. Um, let's dig into your responsibilities as the financial director for Goonswarm. Uh, talk a little bit about what you're, what you can talk about, what you're doing for the Alliance and, and your roles and responsibilities there. Um, well, besides helping, uh, all the other finance directors do their job as well, because we are a team working together. I, I run the lending B program. I run our buyback. I or like sort the locust ore, and I uh, keep a watchful eye over the super S smart, uh, looking for people that might trying to grab a free and very cheap super. Because contrary to popular belief, we're still the cheapest market in the entire game. He, he does pretty much everything for the team except the actual alliance production. Hi, everybody. Hey, Cass. Hey, there he is. But yeah, um, as Cass said, um, I do all those things and whatever he tells me to do on a given day. Um, I, I, heard your, we, I heard your we boss. Got the is, man. I heard your boss is not very good with computers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I mean, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> that seems no, dangerous. Uh, I don't know what happened there with Discord. It just went poof and then started working. I blamed Discord. I went in and I set my my thing to push to talk and then back to voice activation, and now it works. Everything thought it was configured correctly, and so I was I was angrily blaming the stream. But it could just be Discord, which sucks in its own mm -hmm. half a dozen unpredictable ways. So, hi everybody. Special ways. But can yeah, um, beyond, beyond is great because he was rich long before he came to the team, which creates a high level of, of sort of default trust. Uh, and we make him do pretty much everything. If I need to go acquire 150 billion isk worth of something, he can do it without without and get the actual amount I want or more for that <laughs> 150 billion without <laughs> overspending because he's just going to nuke the market where if I asked certain other directors whose names start with K, for example, they would just destroy Jita without <laughs> thinking about it. All Beyond actually thinks about it, which is great. So that and a bunch of grunt labor is all it takes. It's worth noting that the finance team right now is pretty small. I need to get, to get back to hiring, but it's also because we do not actively do that much. We have GSOL managing a lot of the moon stuff. We have other other departments are involved in various things that we have a little bit of our fingers into, um, but otherwise we're mostly just financiers. The lending B program has just been amazing. Uh, I think at one point this month we had someone big pay us back, but we were very close to a couple trillion in outstanding loans, just helping people both big and small within the Imperium have capital available. So that's been a smashing that's, success. And yeah, that's I, a good lead in. I I would really go ahead, Dave. I bet you at least half a trillion of that was lent to Kumi. Just throwing it out there. 
it's more than that. <laughs> yeah. so, but I don't know for sure. It's more, you know, but I'm not going to yeah. run numbers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's what's great about it, is there are people who need a lot of capital, and they pay interest, and there are people who don't need very much, but it's a big boost for someone who doesn't need very much to say, oh, yeah, we can lend you 10 or 15 billion, no problem. And that doesn't last for very long, even, you know, that's not where we're making our money. We're making our money on Kumi and, <laughs> and the people who need a ton. But it offers us this flexibility that, that no one in the Imperium should feel like they are stuck for lack of funds to advance their EVE career. That's been a big change. Um, just oh. the the discount on it versus what used to, you know, used to be we're paying between 10 or 15% a month to get a private loan, even with collateral. And we have we've just exerted a huge downward pressure on that as the government uh, in a way that is not available, I think, in a lot of the rest of EVE. Kazanir, the financial regulator over here. I have Talk more about Lenny B, for sure. Oof. Yeah, I, I will also say like 28% of all our loans is $5 billion on collateralized through the time. So we have seen a lot of people like starting up getting uh, a small loan for something and paying back within like one or two months and then coming back a month later when they're set up for the next step, which might be like reactions or something and being like, hey, I have these assets now, I would like to borrow uh, 30 billion. And then we see like people slowly scale up and we have six or seven people that have like repeated over four loans now. Um, so it's definitely working. And it's it's very nice to see like people starting out with like five billions to get into his task and get something running or like get a crap call so they can go out and, and do raw call uh, beacons with their body. And then like three months later coming, oh, I need 30 billion with this collateral I have to like start reactions and then things kind of snowball from there. One thing I will say no, about that. I mean, that's a good... Go ahead. One thing I will say about Beyond as well, I was going to mention it earlier, is he, he is meticulous. He doesn't do what some people would do and you know, give benefits to their friends. For instance, I tried to sell a avatar to someone that both he and I know very well. And he's like, nope, you still got to wait 24 hours. I was like, you know full well we're not spies. <laughs> it's like, nope, wait. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, um, a... Talk about the... Talk about the the risk in lending for lending B and like what safeguards you have in place and how do you determine who qualifies? How does that work exactly? To the extent that you can explain it, of course. Sure. Um, we have a like a fairly public lending B post that explains a lot of it. Um, there's no real secret that we are requesting 100% collateral if your loan is over five billion, um, and. If you make a request for an uncollateralized loan, there's a lot more in checking in going on be behind the screens, where we'll like look at how f long time you've been in the Imperium, who is your corp directors, who do we know, is there anyone that can vouch for you? A vouch is always required from a CEO or a direct full director in the Imperium. Um, so we we do check, but we also at the point that. Sometimes you will have new people coming into the game. For instance, in ASCII or Karma Fleet, hear about a great option, be hyped about it, and willing to give it a go. And if they have people behind them saying, like, we believe in this in this person, they actually might have a have a good plan. And we also ask people to write out, like, what is the strategy? What are they trying to do? What are they trying to accomplish with this money? And if the strategy sounds good and there's thought behind it and there's a corporation behind them saying, yeah, we, we, we vouch for this dude, it's fine. Like, we let people try. That's uh, awesome. So when we get into the higher level of, like, loans, like 100 plus, uh, we have some things we don't allow as collateral. Um, but that's it. And then always 100% collateral. So if it should backfire, I can make sure that the alliance is not out hundreds of billions because that is always a bad day when I have to tell Cass and hear that. That's, that's never Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have <laughs> as collateral. I don't even know the list. We do not allow have... anything with an expiration date. No officer mods, no BPCs. Um... And very sense. few BPOs, uh, like Super and Titan BPO, are valued a lot below price. 
Right, you'd have to discount that. Oh. That makes a ton yeah. of sense. I just never thought to ask. I've seen so much valuable collateral <laughs> in the to me that we might be restricting it. Uh, we just we have... gave his his faction supercarrier back, if I remember right. Yep. Uh, we had a person who requested a loan for thirty billion to start reactions, uh, who had uh, eight out of ten uh, Titan BPOs, three of them, mm-hmm. and we allowed that because that's three hundred billion worth. Uh, and he wanted 30, so that's fine. If he ran with it, sure. I would have bought the cheapest uh, Titan BPOs in the entire game. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, that's fair. Definitely, that is fair. Definitely a thing. Um, I know but, full yeah. well, but Beyond would not lend me any ISK. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest, the biggest thing there is the analysis of the plan, right? If someone is coming to us and saying, hey, I want to to borrow 100 billion, I'll use a real example, to finish my Azarial, this is only okay if we're confident that that person is already making a ton of money and is going to pay us back, right? Normally, like, let me buy this particular fun thing. That's not the point. The point is this should be a business plan, and we're helping you with your EVE career, so to speak, your ability to generate more money for yourself to get over the hump, whether that's a roar qual or whether that's reaction maps or, or whatever the heck. Um, so I, I think that's probably the most successful part of the program is both doing that, but also the fact that we're doing it points people to thinking about that, where often people don't think in those terms until they're at account six or eight or whatever. That's when you start thinking about that type of analysis, where now we have yeah. people thinking about that at account one or account two, which is is just great. I mean, you don't I mean, just want collateral; you want you want a spreadsheet too to show <laughs> to show foundation, or at least a a plan of attack. Yeah. Uh, I don't need to know what you're reacting, but I need to know that that is your plan and how you plan on selling your reaction. Are you moving it to Jita? Are you selling it internally in the Alliance? Do you have a producer you are active, actively selling to where you have a standing deal? Uh, or so you are you just can't... trap yourself. Yeah. Um, so a lot, a lot of that. And it's also like the whole idea with it was, um, and I'm not going to take credit. This is a Kunmi idea. Um, but like helping line members to skip steps in getting ISK income because a lot of the Imperium's value and, and ISK making is based around having rich line members instead of being rich up top. Well, yeah. I can definitely agree with that because you gave me from your personal ISK my starting ISK to start industry and get my alts all set up, which I still owe you 20 yeah. bill. This is, but, <laughs> you know, like I... Like I mentioned, this was already something I felt like before we thought of this that we were pretty strong at with a public loan market in you know an internal public loan market, but the prices were just heinously expensive in in comparison to what we're doing now. So there are probably some rich people who feel like the government outcompeted them, and and that is okay. Socialism, will, space communism will occasionally get you. Um, yeah. Oh no, they have to put more effort in to make themselves richer. Okay, so. This is this is where I really wanted to go with you beyond today. We have 114 viewers right now. Let's talk about how you use Eve. And we've had this discussion. It was one of the things that I made me want to become your friend, actually. You told me that in real life, you use Eve economics to teach students how the world of economics works in the IRL world. And I want to dig into a little bit about, like, um, what in-game strategies are you teaching them and what like what nuggets can you give us that might make us a little bit more successful in what we're doing yeah um so like real life i am a social worker and i use alternative teaching methods for children that has um problematic homes let's call it that like parents does not have the foundation to teach them uh, empathy and uh, like real life skills um and one of the my ideas was to use a real life market with zero consequence for uh, young uh, kids in their teenage years to like see the consequence of using money they maybe not have um so we do it basically a little bit like lending be but just a lot smaller oh, smaller neat. um 
I I give them a small loan of my own personal money. It's nothing to do with the alliance, but like a 30 million isk, and I put them to Gita, and we talk about like how do you spot a good market, what is the good value, what margins are you looking for, how do you calculate margins, what is why is that important, um, what is the upwards and downwards trend, and we do it on a monthly basis where we I have them trade in what they think might be smart write out like a semi report of like what they traded how much they made or how much they lost and what the lesson behind what they did was um and then i uh, we basically go from there uh, some find it a lot f- a lot of fun and becomes very good at it i have a, a couple of them there's they're big enough, so sometimes when Casimir comes to me and are like, I need this for like 150 billion and I need it tomorrow, I actually sometimes use them because some of them will have 200 billion worth of meta modules sitting in a storage container for a rainy day. Um, That's amazing. I wish I had And that. some of them... The last time I asked him for that, I did not say two days. I gave him a whole like month and change, and he still did it in three days. But that's beside the point, I guess. <laughs> over, under promise, over deliver. Right. Yeah. Um, um, so yeah, uh, we also like I'm um, just thinking about like how much I can save due to like real life versus uh, versus a game, but like some of them will realize that the game is a lot more than just trading and play it in their own time. Um, and I have seen a couple of them deciding to go together to like do high sec missions and do like joining other alliances and like really enjoy the game. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a good teaching tool because it's a lot of real life skills you get to test without any real risk involved. Yeah. I know, I mean, the game wasn't around when I was in high school, but if my high school economics teacher had used it, I thought I think that would be pretty awesome. So I, I'm right. I'm down for that. Um yeah, talk about marketing that work that yeah, that right? that was right for that, yeah. Uh market analysis and in the tools and techniques that you use when you are looking at the game's market dynamic and um like how do you employ identifying trends and investment opportunities? Can you come on, give us a secret sauce. Come on. I know you can do it. Um, I'm going to make so many people mad now. And I know Cass and you have heard this before. And um, there's a lot of spreadsheets in Eve. There's a lot of like ways, ways to ana- an- an- uh, analyze a market and look at this up and downwards trends. I don't use anything. Um, How do you yeah. keep track? Uh, I, I remember. <laughs> oh, geez. Imagine okay. if I tried to do that. Um, I have had people say, like, to, to go into the Warhammer 40k references, that I am like an orc. It, it shouldn't be working, but magically it does. <laughs> um, and 99% of it, yeah. Er, er, I have a lot of sticky notes on my walls. I have a, a, a whiteboard uh, behind me where I write down like trends. And the that's why you didn't want to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right now behind me is the the tracker for the Palantine Keepstar, but that's about it. That's the only thing you would okay. be able to say. Um, but like in like the game, there's the quick bar when you are in the market, and I just add a lot of things to that, and then make folders to name it so like this is i have a one called like a stockpile for the alliance and one called uh upgoing market trends and a special meta modules and so on and so forth so it's a lot of like in-game tools the only thing i use a lot is um i'm lazy and i don't want to calculate a margin in my head so i have a margin calculator homepage open all the time where i can okay. just, like t- take the numbers and if i am unsure about a margin i'll i'll calculate it there uh just to be sure before i do something stupid um and then i have the good thing about trading is i also don't only work alone i work with a lot of people um like i have been trading for a long time the trading community in eve is rarely 
rather small if you get to like the like hundreds of billions trading. Um, so people know people, and a lot of the time you'll have someone being like, "Hmm, this looks weird. Are you manipulating this market?" And I might not be, but now I definitely know I have to look at it um, and be like, hmm, no. And I'll poke like seven or eight people on Discord being like, is any one of you doing this? And sometimes someone will be like, damn it, you, you realized. Uh, don't do anything. I was like, it's fine. Um, it's funny because I ha we had an example a couple weeks ago where I had seen something on the market and I took it to you and I was like, is this something worth getting into? And you said, no, 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 I was being manipulated. So I yep. was... It was kind of an interesting moment. Last question, and then we're going to switch it over to CSM and, and let Kaz talk about things other than finance. Have you ever made any serious, grave mistakes in your market PvP play that were, like, embarrassing, I, embarrassingly fun to talk about? Um, I, oh, I made one, but um, Cassania saved me without knowing. Um, <laughs> I, uh, when they announced the Mutoplasmid for drones... Uh, I was like, hell yeah, this is going to be good. About 600 and, uh, 1,650 geckos, because I was thinking that I would be able to um, mutoplasmid them and sell them for triple the money. And then the day after uh, they talked about it, they went out on Reddit, I think, and were like, oh, by the way, you can't do this to geckos. I was like, okay. Um, so I sat on almost 1,700 geckos I bought for like 92 to 95 million each um and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them and then three months later we announced the raw call a uh, crab call and they use geckos so I imported them all to delve and sold them awesome well, good. I, have, um, I, would, well, I can't take credit on that someone else invented the crab call business but I just, <laughs> I just fair enough it with guard bees a lot because I, I enjoyed doing that in 1DQ and inviting someone to come kill the, the Imperium CSM. It's actually on one of my Kazan named pilots, it's my only solo kill is a Rourke, is in a Rourke wall, solo killing a Vagabond that hung out just a little too long on grid because he didn't think those drones were actually dangerous. Some NC dot guy. Anyway, I was very proud of that. Didn't have to tackle him or nothing. It was all me. It was, it was grand. I nice. have I have one question for you beyond keep it brief as well not the explanation before. Um what is going on with Plex? Um because <laughs> that is ridiculous. Um, I actually do to real life haven't been looking at the market for the last like 5 or 6 days. Um so it was news to me when you noticed it uh and sent it to me but I but since we started talking I have been poking like seven or eight people on Discord just to make sure that I'm not falling into something. But I can't really see anything except like it's rising high. There's just been a sale. We had a big pop up in mid August, but that was a sale as well. And the new Skinner thing I was told was out. And then there's the hyper net. 50% off. So it looks like a lot of people are just doing their yearly buys of Plex making plex spike, uh, prices spike a little bit but this is high i would not buy plex right now no i had yeah, to because it's... one of my important characters went and mega yesterday and i was crying yeah i mean these things are the the both lack of recent plex sales on plex and the recent omega sale for plex where you get a discount on a three-month sub even in plex is what is basically driving that uh, the Plex market is typically not all that healthy, as a matter of fact. Uh, <laughs> nope. Some of the people will go AFK a lot, who have a lot. There are a few big market makers that, when they are engaged, can make a fair amount of money. Um, but it, you know, I wouldn't, I would not recommend trying to trade in Plex to make money. If you're going AFK for a year, by contrast, probably a pretty good store of value. Uh, it's a very complicated topic, but yeah, anyone who knows what's what fears the Plex market, so to speak. Yeah, in like very short term, Plex is a long term market. You don't go in it because you think you can flip it in a week. Right. Absolutely. Um, but if you're going away for a year, it's worth it. Funnily enough, yeah, when it was yeah. at five point four the other week, I was considering buying some and just sitting on it, which 
ironically, I would have been able to flip it in a week if I'd have known this was coming and make quite a bit of risk off it. But um, yeah, but Plex like... always goes up in theory, and then it crashes, and then it goes up again. I bought my big storage of Plex when they were one point eight, um, and then the first time the market hit five point five, I liquidated. I think like eighty thousand Plex. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, so moving on to the the thing that we tried to do at the start, and then you know, Discord was Discord. Um, the CSM. So, Kaz, for those that may not know, can you explain a little bit about what the CSM is and what it does? I gave a brief overview while we were having mic difficulties, but you know, horse's mouth and sure. all that. Yeah. I mean, so the Council of Stellar Management is the the player base's elected body for tranquility. To, to give feedback about EVE. Uh, elected means if you have an Omega account, every single Omega account gets to vote. Uh, they use a single transferable voting system, which means you actually get to pick a list of, of 10 candidates, which is the, the number that get elected, and say, here's my ranking, and pick a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Uh, and so we put forward a couple of candidates of our own every year. Typically, some of our allies do also, and we will put together a ballot and and strongly suggest to people that they should vote exactly as the state tells them to, and that works very well. That's pretty much the optimized way of conducting an STV election from the perspective of a party running a slate in real life. These are, you know, this is a type of election that actually exists. People do this uh, as you put forward a whole a whole slate or a list, um, and that that's that's how it goes down. Uh, so the way that works is, as you go through the ballots, you will first tally up everyone's first choice and then see who gets elected. And then anybody whose vote did not get on, those votes cascade down to the second person that they have on their ballot. And you go through the whole thing again and say, okay, who has enough votes to get on now after those votes have shifted? And you keep doing that until you fill up your 10 slots. So in terms of what the CSM does, then once that's done, you get elected, you sign an NDA. And you can't tell anyone anything about what happens. Well, that that's not technically true. There's a bunch of stuff you can't say, right? Typically, the, the direct feedback that you're getting from CCP, frequently they'll tell us things and explicitly say, like, this is NDA, right? You can't talk about it because it's a preview of what's coming up or they're asking for feedback on should we do this? Should we not do this? Will this work well? Will this work poorly? So on and so forth. Um, so we get a fair amount of that. Um, but they also you know, leverage us as a communications body. We're out there typically trying to explain to the player base either how CCP is thinking or what's intended, um, sort of as a, you know, not doing the community team's job, but doing portions of something similar when it's necessary. Um, so there's sort of a dual role. Um, and the, the goal of this, it was instituted in the wake of something called the T20 scandal which is a very old scandal where a, a very dumb CCP employee made an even dumber mistake one time and gave a couple of his friends BPOs, uh, except they weren't just any type of blueprint. They were Tech 2 BPOs, which very few people had. This is something you could only get back in 2004, 2005 on a lottery system out of research agents. Um, so in the wake of that, they said, OK, we, we want some accountability, actually, and, and created this body. Uh, and initially, it was actually six-month terms. Uh, now it has evolved to basically year-long terms, and they keep extending them a little bit for reasons. Uh, I'm coming up on the end of, of year two, but have been in office now 28 months uh, and just submitted my app to run again. Uh, and that will, I think, the list of candidates will be officially public on the 4th of October. There's a two-week campaign period and then another two-week voting period, more or less. It's probably a little bit less than two weeks apiece. Um, and then at some point, the the new CSM will be announced. So I think ultimately I'll probably hit 29 or 30 months in office just on the two years because they shifted the, the CSM 17 election where I got on the first time was in early, I think it was in May, honestly, or early June of, of 2022. Um, so that that's basically what we do. Get a lot of previews, um, talk a lot at that stage, complain a lot after it's released and everyone is unhappy, which basically is the only timeline that exists. Um, and, and try try to, to bridge a 
what can be honestly a canyon of understanding between how the player base sees a thing and what they think will happen and what CCP thinks or thought will happen. Um, which that's both rewarding and very frustrating at times. So, so one question really, it, well, it's actually two in one here. So you mentioned that uh, a lot of groups essentially advise their members on who to vote for. Yeah. How, how do you choose those people? Um, I mean, there's, there's obvious carefully. ones. The, the Goon Swarm head of finance, for instance, is, is going to definitely be an obvious. But there's some, it's, uh... there's some bartering with the other groups, including hostile ones, from what I understand as well, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. It it varies from year to year. Uh, this is something I'm actually quite familiar with uh, because just after I joined uh, Goon Swarm was in 2010. My original member corp was a band of refugees from the World of Warcraft Elitist Jerks forums. We came and, and joined the reformed Condi Goon Swarm Federation just after Mittens took over within like a month, actually. And then a few months later, during CSM5, Starbase jump bridges were nerfed. From you could you previously could have two jump bridges in the same system and make a Stargate less jump bridge network, and that was nerfed down to one. And it turned out that basically the whole CSM, very few Nullsec people on it at the time, had said, "Oh yeah, we don't care about that. That's fine." And we we all lost our minds. So right after that, that was the the sort of beginning of us caring about it again, and we said we're gonna try and put the people on that we want. And immediately Mitani and Vilerat both ran and they were both on, I think it was CSM six. I'd have to go back and check if I have the numbers off by one. Um, but ever since that time, it has been a very top down. We're going to send at least a couple of candidates that are pretty senior in leadership, hopefully, and that we trust to be in the room and prevent anything really dumb from happening, whether that is CCP or whether that is something that comes from other people on the player base. Um, so with that basic framework, that that then varies a lot. Sometimes CCP is going to have great ideas and players will have dumb ones or vice versa. Sometimes you get people on the council who are from hostile powers that are just desperately untrustworthy <laughs> in various ways and that the goal is to just play defense sometimes. Um, I have not really experienced that. We've had pretty good relationships with everybody on the CSM uh, the past couple of years and with CCP, as a matter of fact, as these things go. Um, some of that is is also just owing to the situation. When I got on, in, in I don't know if anyone remembers, in 2022 in summer, the game was just in the doldrums. It was a couple of years of scarcity. There was not really an end to it in sight. The riots had just been a few months prior uh, over their prosperity patch that didn't really work. Um, and so and a lot of the CSM was elected in that frame. It was the people who were willing to go and try and and still try, even though it felt like half of the game had quit. And CCP ultimately was receptive to that and to our, our combination of messages. Um, so definitely at that time, Angry Mustache and I both went. Uh, I originally... Uh, was the, the Alliance's auditor back in 2010 to 2014. So I was al always involved in finance, but was also sort of the moon spreadsheet guy for the CFC. Uh, and I've done a ton of, of that type of paper pushing, industry, economics, jump freight, whatever. Uh, Angry Mustache is one of the game's premier spreadsheeters from this era. And so we both went and essentially attempted to help them fix things uh, in a variety of ways. And you can see that across the course of a couple of expansions, there's a variety of things uh, addressing industry, taxes, uh, not certainly not everything we wanted in particular, and not everything that any particular person wanted, but they they listen. You know, they're, we're not getting the cold shoulder by any means. Uh, at the same time, we don't always agree. And like I said, there can be this canyon of understanding. So, um, so that that is essentially how we pick meaning we as alliance leadership are always looking for people who we feel like are experienced enough that the re that we feel like the rest of the CSM and CCP is going to be locked in the room with them rather than them being locked in the room with everybody else if that's a familiar metaphor so that that's key thing number 1 and then we try and pick topically if it's appropriate um and that's how angry and I got the job and, and just have kept it for a while. Um, so that 
I don't know if that answers fully the question. It can vary a lot. Um, we, there have been years where we put a number of other Imperium candidates on because we weren't feeling cooperative. Uh, there have been some black marks, too, where we put someone on that we later regretted uh, who did not perform very well or regretted for other reasons. Um, and there have also been times when we did a, a ton of horse trading. I'll go back to, again to Mitanni and Violrat. That their first election, they established a sort of unified slate of all Nelsec candidates, and the vast majority of the council ended up being Nelsec people. Uh, and that that reality has sort of obtained ever since that there's a great deal of Nelsec people, because it turns out we have the most Omega accounts by a pretty wide margin. And only the fact that we all hate each other so desperately has prevented that from being more dominant uh, in various years. Um, so I'm not I'm not ready to fully announce that yet, but I'm hoping for something not fully along those lines, but I'm hoping for some cooperation with the other blocks this time for some specific reasons. Don't want to uh, boil that too early, but something interesting is hopefully coming um, because there are some missing pieces that I think need to be covered. So we'll see how the campaign goes. Um, I also use the campaign as a chance to get out there and cast my magic spells, whether that's Daniel enters the lion's den or you know, Christ prophesies to the damned in hell or the limit break version of Jehovah bedazzles Moses on the mount. I'm always willing to go out and, and talk to people in the campaign scenario. I was just on a Discord the other day, which is called, I'm not kidding, Overclocker NPSI. If you're in the Imperium, you know that those letters are not something we're very happy with all the time. Uh -huh. This is all, you know, small gangers. And they they just have their minds blown to have a Nelsec guy come and talk to them sometimes. Um, but that that's the purpose of the campaign. And one thing I've tried super hard to do because I'm sort of this old school shadowy vizier from two different eras of Goon Swarm's history is come up with solutions that do address the whole game and are not, not focused on us, right? Something I said during CSM 17 is, you know, look, we won the war. We were kind of happy with how that went. <laughs> so there, there's more to do than just our specific needs, and I, that continues to be true. Uh, if you if you read my CSM 18 uh, threads, there was a public one. There was one on the Goon Fleet forums. You already know that I've spent a long time trying to say to them, a big part of the solution here is rebuilding what I call a sort of platonic version of Goon Swarm's idealized enemies. A, a group of people that wants to hold space and will take space, but they have no crabs. They don't want a crab, but they will come and fight. They want to hold as as much and extract as much resources as they can. So not not any single one of our big enemies across the last 15, 20 years has looked exactly like that. But that has been part of my campaigning with CCP is this is essential in order to to balance out the way space works and the way the game functions. So on on some of the comments in uh, chat, um, first of all, the there was there was a comment about um, on one of the firesides somebody listened to, and I'm guessing this is somebody from a hostile group. Um, I'm guessing it was Mittens that probably said this that um, we want to do what's best for everyone, and then five minutes later we want to look out for our group. Um, the big the the big thing there is. There's certain changes that have to happen for the good of everyone. So scarcity, as Kaz mentioned, was bad for everyone. Just utterly terrible. It, it, it was. and But nevertheless, and uh, I've gotten them to deny this a number of times, but I listened to a couple of the town halls, at least. There were town halls by Villian, by Gobbins, during the war, taking credit for various scarcity-related changes. As late as the end of the war, you had people asking Vili, you know, do you, do you actually think CCP is doing a good job? And he was saying, yeah, it's great. And, and then, so I came into it expecting more of the same, and that's that's not what happened, right? We have not had that that type of problem <laughs> anymore. Uh, but yeah, there is a, an element there of if I feel like someone else is really operating in bad faith. I would think of it as my job to stop that. And when I have seen things I'm suspicious of, none of which I can or would comment on because none of them correctly, none of them turned into a scandal. But if there are things, I go after them pretty hardcore, actually. Uh, maybe someday the tale will be told of a couple of those after the NDA expires. They're not super relevant, but I do investigate things like that. 
Um, but that doesn't change the bedrock principle, which we have always held to is something Darius Johnson, previ previous multi-time CEO of Goon Swarm, said at a fan fest one time. He said, we're not here to ruin the game. We're here to ruin your game. Now, everyone heard that and immediately misunderstood him and said, oh, goons are going to ruin the whole game. That's not, that is the exact opposite of what that phrase means, right? We want the game to be as healthy as possible. We need enemies to fight. We need another 100,000 subscribers. We need another 30K on the PCU because that would make the game better. You know, that that would bring us more opponents, more stuff to do. That would be awesome. So I, I want that game. And I honestly... I agree with some of the crazy sounding stuff that their leadership has said where they think Eve can last many decades. You know, it's already got two under its belt and I, I firmly believe in that. This is the pinnacle strategy game out there. Uh, they have a great thing if we didn't screw it up so often. We meaning both the players and CCP, right? Uh, that's another element that went into this. And I mentioned this also in my thread is that many of the scarcity changes not to defend CCP for making them necessarily, but there is a big group of players, uh, including some on the CSM, who thought that some of them would be great and backed that. And so it's like there are a variety of complex topics, I guess. And the then line. one quick mention on the other comment was um, that there are certain changes that would benefit just one particular group. The biggest one I can think of is NPC space in the drones. <laughs> Because it's the only place that doesn't have it, and it's ridiculous. So there's certain. Well, and... Yep. I mean, I was going to say that's a great example of something that I have never bothered with pushing no, for because I feel like happen. it is a little bit too partisan, yeah. right? I don't know if it will or won't happen. I have expressed to them that I think at some point they're going to realize that something needs to happen, that it will be unsustainable in some form. But I can't predict when or where that would be. Um, I, I do know that all of Goon Swarm thinks that if we were to go conquer the drone regions, they have so little faith in CCP that they think NPC space would immediately follow our, our conquest victory. But it's also something that's very hard for you to say to see, like CCP without it sounding yeah. incredibly biased. Right, Because exactly. the big and reason so why I, I would love it is so I can rain dreads on all of our supers. Like, you know, <laughs> a lot of people would like that, not just us. There are people who have more dreads to hunt with than yeah. we do and are more willing to Most use them. Love even. It. So, um, but that I'm, I'm sort of grateful to the whelp gods in that sense. One thing I did at the start of the, the first term was this is actually this is interesting. Uh, right after I got elected the first time, <laughs> everyone suddenly noticed that my main had zero kills this. because I'm a, I'm a paper pusher. Now, there's, there's several elements to this story. With the first element is I immediately re-rolled that character because of Bloodlines, which was important in 2007 when I first looked at the game. The race and the sub-race of pilot you picked determined your starting attributes. And I picked the thing I wanted. First, I was Verrochior in Minmatar, and it was just garbage. You had, like, Charisma as one of your highest stats. Just dumb. So I have several early pilot rerolls, in addition to the fact that I am a garbage F1 monkey and don't solo PvP and like confirm. that on my own. So, so everyone all of a sudden realized this. There was a huge campaign of people making fun of me online. All very fair. Mittens, Mittens and I actually forgot to think about killboards before running me at all, because it's just we don't think about that stuff. Um, but I thought to myself, okay, this, this part doesn't bother me, but it would have bothered me for them to turn out to be right and for me to be stupid during my term. So I went back and I read the entire patch notes. But I didn't, I didn't do it in order. I did it in reverse from the end, the most recent, all the way to the beginning, like my mythological hero Merlin aging in reverse, if you're familiar with that story. Um, it was revelatory because I got to the very beginning and it's the third set of patch notes. It's the very first expansion pack. There are two previous ones, right? The game comes out, and it's Castor, and that's the Simon & Schuster release, the box release. And then later in 2003 is Second Genesis, which is the re-release, the online re-release. In Earlier in 2003, Simon & Schuster goes out of business. DCP says, ah, what the heck, and they decide to, to self-publish. One of the greatest... <laughs> you know, advantages to early broadband 
a great bet by them, right? So then the first expansion pack, actual expansion pack to Eve is called Exodus. If you go look up the Exodus patch notes, which I think you need to go to the Internet Archive to find, in it is the entire moon system. POS, Goo, Reactions, Tech 2, Tech 2 Blueprints, all that stuff. The heart of the Conquest game, of the map game that EVE became, is in the very first expansion pack. And that was... Like, like I said, like getting a vision from the whelp gods, and I realized what the the sort of core idea was, and I spent a bunch more time working out sort of the underlying math and trying to generate a set of axioms that could prove what I was talking about. Um, but that that desire emerged from just wanting to make sure that I didn't screw it up, and also saying, you know, I've I've done a lot in this game. Like I said, I had this big career with the CFC thought of myself as one of the principal architects of that coalition. I, every, every single time we conquered a region, I had a moon spreadsheet for it, you know. And then in my my new career, coming back in 2020, if you don't know this, uh, I was the sort of the person who architected us replacing 100 Titans in a weekend between the M2 tech armor and hull timer, while some of Panfams were subsequently late to the hull timer, and then we won. So some other stuff happened to help us win server problems and so on. Uh, but the reason those guys were late is they were unprepared to an extent. And so that was that was also motivating, right? I feel like I, I have done a lot and both didn't want to bigfoot other people on the council, but wanted to come up with some real solutions that would last. Um, and I'm I, now just very frustrated because I feel like I haven't quite gotten there yet. But so I have a question. Cass? Real, real quick, run that down. <laughs> okay, uh, that that weekend with the M2, how much sleep did you get? Oh, I mean, Probably I got a normal man. amount. Yeah, I think I got a normal <laughs> amount the first night uh, because it it was it was actually probably a few hours after downtime when I woke back up and realized that we had to figure out what to do, and then it took really all day that day for me to write the post. To, you know, describing the war bond and what we were going to do and getting arranged. So that was, I think, must have been all of Thursday. I have to go look at the, the exact calendar. And really, so it was only a couple days of of assembling all of the Titans. And I had help, right? The the finance directors at the time, Angry, Plaid, Nodrakish, were all mega engaged on acquiring the Titans that we needed to reimburse people with. And then I got to hand them out like Oprah going, you get a Titan, you get a Titan. He's still very famous, right? I have a, my own Titan is named the GBS Oprah's B club um, because of this. Uh, so that was, that was exciting. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It wasn't, it wasn't so much a lack of sleep. I also, I had a little bit of fun during that time too. I personally delivered a jump freighter to some spies in NPC Delve uh, who were helping us buy out their market and causing all sorts of problems. So it was very, it was an exciting weekend. I've always thought about getting M2 XFE as a license plate or something like that. I don't know if that'd be too cringe. So uh, I think it's the right amount. <laughs> yeah. That that is all we got time for today, Kaz. I'm sure we'll see you in next week or the week after, probably to talk about what you're going to do for the CSM this time around. Yeah, um, we we will see how that goes. Also, feel free to look at other. Uh, Eve Media, I, I was actually kind of bad during the campaign last year in comparison, but I do like to hit lots of other shows. Feel free to show up, hassle the guys that we hate, help me out, and so on and so forth. Uh, you'll probably see me around. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been great. Beyond, it's been amazing, very informative. Uh, Betty, yeah, as, it's been fun. Betty, as always, and until next week, folks, it will be Sunday again next week, because I am working on Saturday. We will see you then. Thank you, guys. Everybody. See ya. <laughs>